Hi and welcome to another Evenings with Anne. I really like reading what people have said about their experience of God and the importance of coming to God with love and in response to God's love. I've learned a lot from those people, um, whether they are prophets who lived centuries before Jesus um, or the apostles or women and men who've lived through the centuries up through until present day. A lady called Jean Guillon, for example, wrote a book about experiencing the depths of Jesus Christ. In it, she said, prayer is nothing but the application of the heart to God and the internal exercise of love. The book of Deuteronomy in the Hebrew scriptures says, if you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul. The Passion Translation of Psalm 103 says this, with my whole heart, with my whole life, with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You've crowned me with love and mercy. Your love is like a flooding river overflowing its banks with kindness. I will bless and praise the Lord with my whole heart. The Bible includes a poem called The Song of Songs, written by King Solomon. You can read it simply as a love poem between a man and a woman, but you can also read it as a parable of divine love, of Jesus' divine love for his bride, the church, as well as his love for each person who loves him. Much of the poem is the beloved and the lover simply talking with each other back and forth, sharing their passion and adoration for the other and their enjoyment of being together. That to me is a picture of what prayer can be. The poem contains a lot of imagery from the Hebrew culture of 3,000 years ago, which makes it hard to understand in the present day in some places. For this reason, I like how Brian Simmons presents the meaning of the words in the Passion Translation. The poem opens with the beloved bride saying to her lover, the shepherd king, your presence releases a fragrance so pleasing over and over poured out draw me into your heart we will run away together into the king's cloud-filled chamber the chamber is like the inner room of the temple called the holy of holies full of god's presence also when the jewish people left slavery in Egypt and travelled in the wilderness, the scriptures say that God led them with a pillar of cloud in the day and a pillar of fire at night. Their leader Moses used to pitch a tent outside the camp and whenever he entered this tent, the pillar of cloud lowered and stayed at the entrance while Moses spoke with God and it was so that the people could know would know that um, Moses was in the presence of God so that's sort of the imagery behind the cloud filled chamber God loves you you are his beloved when you express your adoration and love for him, the Holy Spirit will draw you into his presence. 
into his cloud-filled chamber where you can enjoy being with him. In closing, I want to share some words from the Shepherd King in chapter 2 of the poem. I have come, as you asked, to draw you into my heart and lead you out. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. Ah, oh, that's just beautiful. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you.